Assalamualaikum alaikum dear students uh, welcome to 10th William technology course uh, lecture number 11 uh, in this section uh, we will talk about uh, 10 film depositions and uh, particularly uh, uh, in this section uh, we will try to have a brief introductions of different depositions uh, techniques so let's first come towards the uh, 10 films uh, as you know that and in the introduction lectures uh, we talked about uh, 10 film and we discussed that thin film is now basically uh, uh, has a thickness typically smaller than uh, hundred uh, th uh, sorry thousand nanometers. I mean we discussed that it's a layer uh, deposited at the top of a substrate uh, with a thickness smaller than uh, thousand uh, nanometer. And we also discussed uh, in the starting lecture that is uh, mostly in the first two lecture that is uh, thin film has uh, some special properties. Uh, that is, uh, it's different from the uh, properties of the bulk material. So the special property uh, that a thin film uh, has, uh, it might be that is, uh, it should not be fully dense. Uh, it should be under stress. Uh, different impact structures from the bulk uh, QG. That is, uh, it has two-dimensional structures. Uh, it's very thin film, strongly influenced by the surface and interference effect. So uh, there are, I mean, uh, there are some journal staff, uh, typical staff in making the thin film. And those uh, steps are uh, just like we have discussed in that particular lecture. That is, uh, first of all, we have the emission of the particle from the source, which normally we do by, by, by heating uh, the source materials. And that heating can be performed by applying uh, the high voltage. I mean, the details uh, we have given in uh, the starting lectures. And after heating or the emission of the particle from the source, uh, then we have the transports of the particle to the surface. And uh, then we have the condensations of the particles on the surface. I mean, these are the three typical steps that's been involved and the depositions of the uh, thin films. So uh, what are the popular methods uh, that's been involved for the deposition of the thin film? So mainly there are uh, two uh, basic types uh, for the depositions of the uh, thin film. Uh, these include uh, chemical vapor deposition that shortly we call uh, CVD. Uh, in this particular uh, techniques, uh, normally the reacting gas is introduced in the chamber. So as a result of that, uh, chemical reactions occur on the vapor surface, uh, which lead to the depositions of a solid uh, film. I mean, this is uh, somehow like a definition for the chemical vapor depositions. An example of such techniques are APCVD uh, that we call uh, atmospheric pressure chemical vapor depositions, uh, low pressure chemical vapor depositions, uh, plasma enhanced chemical vapor depositions. I mean, these are the few CVD techniques that are most commonly utilized for dielectrics and uh, silicon thin film. Uh, the second techniques uh, we have, uh, we call that physical vapor depositions, or in short, we call that PVD. And such a reactions, uh, no chemical reactions involved. I mean, it's a physical uh, techniques. So what actually happened in this kind of the technique? Uh, so in this technique, uh, vapors of the constituent materials created inside the chamber, and condensations occurred on the weapon surface are leading to the deposition of a solid film. I mean, this is uh, a formal way, more formal way, uh, our definitions of the physical vapor deposition. That is uh, what we have. First of all, uh, we should have vapor of the constituent materials. And these vapor of the constituent materials, uh, they are being created inside uh, the chamber of the PVD system. What happened next? Then we have the condensations on a vapor surface uh, that basically lead to the depositions of a solid film. I mean, this is uh, a more formal definition of the physical vapor depositions technique. So examples of PVD uh, included evaporations, uh, sputter depositions. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, these, these are be, uh, most commonly utilized for a metal depositions. I mean, these, these two, that is evaporation and sputtering, these are the most common type of the uh, PVD or physical vapor depositions uh, technique. Journal characteristic of the thin film uh, depositions uh, uh, that include deposition rate, uh, film uniformity, 
uh, across the vapor, I mean, uh, film uni uh, uniformity means the, uh, that it, uh, basically the film uniformity uh, across the vapor, uh, or we mean that run to run uh, uniformity. Uh, materials that can be deposited uh, basically include metal, dielectrics, or polymers. I mean, it's, uh, these are some of the general characteristics of thin film depositions, uh, in which we say that material that can be deposited, it can be in the metal, metal palm, or it can be a metal type of materials, uh, it can be a dielectrics, or it can be polymers. So, quality of the film uh, normally has physical and chemical properties. Uh, electrical properties, background voltage, uh, mechanical properties uh, that which include stress and addition to the surface. Uh, it should have uh, the optical properties uh, which include uh, transparency, refractive index, etc. Uh, compositions are stoichiometry, uh, that is, the, the material should have proper composition, that is, what particular kind of the element that are being included uh, in the structure of the size size film, and what is the stoichiometry, I mean, the ratio of the uh, elements that are being utilized, uh, are, the, 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 are the element, the, the ratio of the element uh, that can be found and the as deposited thin film. Uh, then we have film density, that is a defect. Uh, which mean phenol or uh, density. Uh, I mean, uh, once we have thin film, so we find uh, the density of thin film, and we also try to uh, to find out the defect because you know that <clears throat> defect can greatly influence the properties of the as deposited thin film. So we also study the uh, texture, grain size, uh, boundary properties, and uh, orientation. You know that all these are very important, especially utilizing the thin film for uh, its particular applications. Uh, then we check the impurity level or the doffing because the impurity level also, uh, I mean, is also uh, disturb the properties or influence the properties of the uh, synthesized or deposited film of a particular kind of of the materials. Uh, Diffusions. Uh, Directionality, that is, uh, we try to track the directionals, that is uh, good for uh, laptop or trench filling. And then we have non directional, that is good for uh, step coverage. I mean, uh, these two techniques uh, a laptop and uh, a trench filling uh, uh, that we will discuss later on uh, in a particular lectures. So uh, we have basically four uh, broad methods. Uh, that is, uh, first we discuss uh, the apotaxy. Uh, what is mean by the apotaxy? Apotaxy is basically crystal structures of films uh, which fits with the uh, one of the substrate. Let me repeat it again. Uh, whenever uh, you heard about the term uh, apotaxy, so apotaxy is basically the crystal structures of the films uh, which fits with one of the uh, substrate. So, uh, like you can see it here, we have a film on a particular kind of the uh, substrate. I mean, we have grown a thin layers of a particular material on a substrate. Uh, this kind of structures, uh, this is basically uh, layer by layer growth. Uh, we call that prank or wonder Marvy structures, wonder Marvy techniques. Uh, what it mean? It mean that we have films atoms. Uh, I mean, in this particular kind of technique. As you can see it here, our film editors are more strongly bound to the surface. I mean, here you can see that the blue, uh, the blue ball-like structure. They, these are basically the the, uh, the substrate atoms, and the green ball-like structure at the top. They are basically the material that are being deposited at the top of the substrate. So, in this kind kind of uh, particular structure, we say that film atoms are more strongly bounded to the surface. I mean, you see, these are the film materials, and it's being tightly bound to the substrate surface, uh, then to each other. And we call that as the path uh, deposition. So this is basically mean 2D, 2D layer by layers uh, growth. Uh, then we have uh, island, uh, island growth uh, that we also call Walmer Weber uh, growth uh, or 3D island growth. Uh, what actually we have in this kind of structure, and this kind of structure we basically deposit metal on the silicon dioxide. So in this particular structures, uh, films atoms uh, are more strongly bounded to each other, 
uh, them to the surface and uh, this is basically occur through slow diffusions I mean this is the difference now you can depreciate the 3d uh, island growth and 2d layer by layer growth that is and 2d layer by layer growth the atoms uh, the films atoms they are more tightly bound uh, to the substrate atoms than to each other while in 3d island growth uh, the the uh, the film atoms they are most tightly bound to each other uh, than in comparison to uh, the substrate atom uh, the third and the fourth uh, we call it uh, stransky uh, kranstenov uh, technique and reactive reactive intermixing so max growth just like we mentioned it's also called stransky kranstenov uh, technique so in these kind of technique uh, just like you can see it here we can deposit andium on the silicon substrate or uh, uh, or silver and silicon substrate or germanium or silicon uh, substrate or we can deposit in andians or uh, phosphorus on gallium or uh, arsenide substrate or we can deposit gallium nitride on aluminium nitride uh, surface uh, so what actually it mean uh, by max growth max growth mean that initially we have layer by layer uh, thin film uh, I mean, it's from thin, uh, thin uh, and this kind of technique. Initially, uh, we have layer by layer, uh, then form three dimension island. I mean, here you can see that. Initially, we have layer by layer. I mean, here you can see it here. And, and then we have uh, three dimension island. I mean, you can see it here and both the structures. And then uh, at the last, we have the reactive uh, intermixing, that is. Uh, uh, the film material they are being intermixed uh, with the substrate material just like you can see it here uh, in this particular structure that's why we call that a uh, reactive uh, intermixing so thin film types uh, based on the crystallinity uh, the first we have on the basis of the crystallinity we have epitaxials uh, epitaxials are uh, in normal language or in journal language we call it uh, single crystalline uh, materials uh, that is palm, uh, that is basically palm layer by layers. Uh, and in this kind of structures, uh, the lattice matches to the substrate. I mean, this is a particular uh, uh, regular arrangements of the atoms uh, that we call single crystalline in a journal language. And it is basically palm layer by layer. And such a kind of the structures uh, we have that is, uh, that is matched to the substrate. So further, what we have about the epitaxial structures and such structures, uh, no grain boundaries. Uh, this kind of structure requires uh, high temperatures and slow growth rates. Uh, so we have high quality thin films. Uh, uh, the example of which is uh, three five semiconductors films, uh, which include uh, or which has example, a good example of which is uh, gallium arsenide or we can have also uh, the boron nitride or some other compound because boron nitride also included and in three five semiconductors and complex oxide i mean these are the example which we can have epitaxials uh, growth uh, we can have the material in a polycrystalline form or the thin film can be in the polycrystalline form what is mean uh, polycrystalline polycrystalline mean we can have islands or max growth what it means it means that we can have lots of grain boundaries i mean uh, we can have one kind of structures uh, uh, i mean uh, one particular materials and inside that particular materials we can have grain boundaries we can have different sections in one section we will have one kind of the patterns and in other part we will have different uh, different kind of pattern i mean uh, and one piece of the material we will have different arrangements of the atom that we call uh, that we call polycrystalline materials. Uh, so, for example, most elemental metals grown uh, near uh, the room temperature. I mean, this example of the polycrystalline uh, materials. Um, number three, we have amorphous material. What does mean amorphous material? Amorphous materials mean that uh, in journal language we say that it's a material which don't have any regular patterns of arrangement inside the solid. Uh, and it's basically islands are mixture growth. Uh, and that we have no crystalline structures here with some sort of range atomic ordering no crystalline defect for example common insulators such as amorphous uh, silicon dioxide so these are basically uh, uh, three types 
uh, of film uh, on the basis of the crystallinity. That is, we have a single crystalline film, uh, we have polycrystalline film, and we have amorphous film. Single crystalline, that is, we have a single layer of the material which has uh, no grain boundary, an example of which is uh, three, five semiconductor, I mean, group three and five semiconductors. We have polycrystalline, I mean, which has uh, uh, grain boundaries, and, and which are one particular structures we have. Are different crystalline uh, structure. That's why we call uh, polycrystalline. And you know that poly means for uh, many. That is, we have many type of crystals uh, and one particular materials. And at the last, we say uh, we have uh, the amorphous material, amorphous film, uh, which means that uh, the film has no crystalline structure at all. Uh, effect of the substrate temperatures on the uh, lateral grain size. So just like you can see it here in the figure, uh, we have uh, 100 angstrom thin gold film deposited at 100, 200, and 300 degrees centigrade by vacuum evaporation. I mean, it's, uh, it's a 100 angstrom uh, thick film up to gold, uh, which is deposited at three different temperatures. The temperatures, uh, they are being chosen as 100 degrees centigrade, 200 degrees centigrade and 300 degrees centigrade. And the methods that has been utilized uh, is uh, vacuum uh, evaporations. So what happens uh, when we have the growth of the telepilum uh, by the vacuum operations, uh, the type is, the thickness is 100 angstrom, the material is a gold film, and the temperature is 100, 200, and 300. So in such a kind of the structure, we have the small islands uh, that start uh, coalescing with the, each other and, uh, and which is basically an attempt to reduce uh, the surface area. So uh, this is basically the tendency to form a bigger island, uh, strong agglomerations and it's enhanced by increasing the surface mobility of the uh, adsorbed species such as by increasing the substrate uh, temperatures. Uh, except under special conditions, the crystallographic orientations and the topographical details of different islands are randomly uh, distributed. I mean that that is this we are discussing that how the temperatures uh, affect uh, uh, the film structures. That is the arrangement of the atoms uh, uh, on the substrate. So uh, at first we say at hundred degrees uh, at hundred degrees centigrade we say that in this particular condition we have a small island start. Uh, uh, coalescing with each other and it's basically an attempt to reduce the surface area. So at 200 degrees here we say that this is the basically the tendency to form a bigger islands, uh, storm agglomerations and enhanced by increasing the surface mobility of the adsorbed species such as by increasing the substrate temperature. At 300 degrees centigrade we say that uh, except under special conditions the crystallographic orientations and the topographical details of the different islands are randomly distributed. I mean, this is how, uh, I mean, the substrate temperature affects the lateral grain size uh, of the thin film. Depends on the substrate temperatures uh, and the depositions uh, growth. So uh, here uh, we have taken example of the copper films uh, that has been uh, deposited on 111 uh, uh, sodium, chloride, uh, sodium chloride substrate. Uh, so uh, what we have in this case, uh, if the equilibrium is achieved for all the reserve atoms, then film will be uh, monocrystals uh, mono that we call apotaxy. Uh, or we can say that it can be a single crystals, uh, which in other words we call that uh, epitaxy. Uh, if we increase the temperature, so at higher temperature, I mean so when we increase in temperature, so higher temperature increases the reserve atoms surface mobility and it will stop once it's find the lowest energy positions uh, nearby. I mean this is the possibility uh, it's higher temperature. But for two fast depositions, uh, 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 two fast depositions stop the moments uh, before uh, the air atom finds the lowest energy position nearby uh, when their air atom is covered by a lateral arrivals uh, air atom. So that's all so we have uh, for general introductions of thin film uh, diffusions. In next lecture, we will start with uh, some proper techniques. Uh, I mean, uh, the more proper techniques that have been utilized for diffusion of thin film. 
So, I see you in that particular lectures. Uh, till then, uh, bye bye.